Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to discuss an essential tool today that is pivotal in network security and management, and it is called PFSense. Okay, so let's dive into how this open source solution can enhance your network's functionality and security. Okay, so first of all, let me give you a little bit intro of what is PFSense. Okay, so what is PFSense basically? So PFSense is an open source firewall and router platform that leverages the stability and reliability of FreeBSD. So basically it's FreeBSD based. FreeBSD is a Unix like operating system, okay? So it is designed to secure your network through advanced filtering, uh, routing and security mechanism, okay? Uh, whether you're a small business or a large enterprise, uh, it doesn't matter. PFSense offers a versatile set of features, okay? That can be tailored for your network needs. So let me tell you a little bit about the key features of PFSense. So PFSense has a lot of features. Okay, I'm not going to discuss them all here. I'm just giving to I'm just going to give you a, a little bit uh, to show you a little bit of them over the top. So PFSense is loaded with features. Uh, so it makes it a powerful player in network management. Okay, its firewall capabilities include st uh, stateful packet inspection, time-based rules, etc. And uh, moreover, PFSense supports various VPN protocols, which is IP, which can be IPsec, OpenVPN. Uh, so you can be, uh, you can make a secure remote access to whatever server you want. Okay, traffic shipping is also possible with PFSense, so you can control the bandwidth of your uh, uh, bandwidth of your uh, clients and hosts and everything else. And it can also uh, be crucial for applications. Uh, so that application always have the network resources that they need okay uh, lastly i think the most underrated feature of pfsense is reporting and monitoring tools okay so pfsense is really good at giving you real time insights into your network okay which can help you make informed decisions very quickly and what are the benefits of using pfsense okay one of the most significant advantage of pfsense is its cost effectiveness it is free to use okay it is open source it's community based and so it's free to use anyone can use it without any type of license fees or anything okay and furthermore its flexibility is unmatched i mean you can configure pfsense to fit almost any network setup from a security perspective regular updates and a robust community mm, i mean it is perfect you know in every way or sense okay and it has a robust community so it ensures that it remains secure against uh, emerging threats Okay, and speaking of community, the PFSense community is an invaluable resource for support and guidance. Uh, the community is really great. Uh, you can go to their Reddit channel or you can go to their forums, so you will get a lot of support and guidance. So let me show you what are the installation requirements. So what you, all you need is an x86 hardware, basically any modern uh, CPU or computer would do. and uh, other than that, you only need a USB drive for installation or anything and a CD maybe, uh, I don't know if CDs are even supported nowadays or not, but uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, let me show you some common use cases. So one of the common use cases is that you can use it in your home networks to secure your home networks. If you're running some home lab or something like that, you can use it for business networks. Okay, business leverages PFSense for its ability to manage and prioritize vast amounts of network traffic and it is also used for safeguarding sensitive information and obviously educational institutions can also use it for because of its filtering capacity and so it can create a safe online learning environment okay so now we're going to get started with pfsense and we will i will show you how to install pfsense but i will not show you how to install it in a manner where you have to buy an actual hardware i will show you how to install it on a on a virtual machine so the any system or any computer that you are using you can have a virtual machine of pfsense you can create virtual router and virtual network so what that enables you to do is uh, leverage all the cap capabilities of pfsense and you can learn uh, from pfsense using your virtual lab or virtual environment okay and then when you have uh, enough knowledge about pfsense then you can maybe buy some hardware to actually make a real time uh, and hardware uh, installation of pfsense okay so let's start okay so first of all i'm going to open up uh, chrome here okay so after opening up chrome you know, what you're going to do is that you're going to type here pfsense and it, this is the first link that comes up so what i'm going to do you can see that option here which says download okay click on download and okay so it's going to uh, it's going to ask you what 
uh, version to download so obviously the version is 2.7.2 which is the latest VFSense version and we're going to select the architecture our architecture is AMD64 okay and installer we're going to select the DVD image ISO installer obviously because we are using uh, we are going to install a virtual machine so uh, we would need an ISO file of VFSense click on this and just click download okay so it should start downloading uh, okay now it's downloading but obviously I have pre-downloaded it so I'm not going to uh, wait for this and just uh, go to the step where we are going to install it on our virtual machine so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, VMware Workstation Pro okay so in our VMware Workstation Pro what we're going to do we're going to click on this icon which says create a new virtual machine okay so now it's asking us to do some settings so we're going to select custom here and click on next uh, we're going to keep this option as it is then click on next and then browse to the pfsense okay first 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 let i missed a step that step is to actually extract the iso file so oh sorry this is the tar dot uh, gz file or basically a compressed file so we're going to uncompress it if you have winrar then you can use winrar to extract the file or basically any other extraction tool you can use okay so i'm going to right click and click on winrar and just going to select extract files okay okay and then just click on okay and it should start extracting all the files now when you click on uh, this and uh, then you can see an iso file is here so this is the iso file that we are going to use for our installation so now let's close it and then browse to the iso file okay so okay it is already browsed to my iso file so basically i came here to download then click on there and this is the iso file that we want now click on open okay then click on next uh, okay and let's change our location okay uh, location uh, let me save it in, on my desktop so i'm going to just create a new folder to store it okay so it's new folder 3 just click on ok and then click next okay so i'm going to choose a single processor and number of cores as 2 okay click on next and just give the ram about 2 gigs okay about 2 gigs of ram okay then click on next and keep these option as they are mm, i think the space is 20 gigs is uh, i think enough for it so okay, let's click on next and then next and then finish so it has already started up so let's work now so now it's going to boot up into the installation process so let's wait for it now press enter and what we're going to select here is we're going to select install okay so in install we're going to go to the auto ufs mode okay but which says guided ufs disk setup okay now click press enter on okay and then you're going to use the entire disk okay click on entire disk and then we're going to select the gpt partition guid partition table okay uh, select this and you can use the arrow keys to uh, guide yourself through this uh, GUI okay then press enter and then press enter and it should start installing and then click on commit and it should start and it is installing okay let's wait for it to install
Okay, so now it has installed, so you can just reboot it and it should reboot to your PFSense installation. Okay, so now it has started, so your PFSense is successfully installed. So after the installation, you need to do a little bit of configuration that I'm going to show you in the next video of how to configure PFSense in a way that you can provide routes to your further other virtual machines and everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, for now, it will just start up and uh, it will ask you to do some configuration. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to show that. So the installation is done, okay? So installation is working perfectly. So thanks for watching the video and but wait, let's just okay. So now it's asking you to uh, to do the VLAN setup that I'm not going to do currently. So yeah, thanks for watching the video. This was the installation setup. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to configure it. Uh, so actually providing so you are actually going to provide routes to your virtual machines. Okay. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye.